Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about the causes of bacterial resistance. First, uh, it causes abnormal enzymatic degradation by causing enzyme abnormal enzymatic degradation. This will also degrade the and uh, drugs with the help of the enzymes the bacteria will regrade the drugs with the help of enzymes so these include chloramphenicol aminoglycosides and also beta lactams then second the second cause of bacterial resistance is prevention of drug accumulation can occur inside the bacteria right prevention of drug accumulation inside the bacteria has two things one no influx or impermeable to the drug these in, then we have abnormal efflux so if there is no influx or no not permeable to the drug these drugs include penicillin pentamidin and also melisoprol the drugs penicillin pentamidin and melisoprol will tell us that um, uh, sorry these drugs uh, resistance these drugs will develop resistance uh, by uh, these drugs these drugs resistance are developed by the bacteria by making these drugs impermeable uh, by making the membranes impermeable to these drugs bacteria will make the membranes impermeable to these drugs and thus the drugs penicillin pentamidin and misoprostol are not permeable to the bacteria thus they develop resistance second mechanism is abnormal efflux mechanism that means the drug which has entered the cell will go out of the cell through the efflux pumps so obviously the drug that does not act on the bacteria these include tetracycline erythromycin anti-malarials like chloroquine and quinine and these drugs also include fluoroquine also so these are the two important things then if you see the third important thing is abnormal target protein whenever there is abnormal target protein or decreased affinity of the target so these abnormal target protein or decreased affinity of the target include for example these include fluoroquinolones fluoroquinolones causes dna gyrase abnormality macrolide and clindamycin both these also cause ribosomal point mutation because these drugs act on the uh, ribosomes by causing ribosomal point mutation they are they develop resistance then mrna mrsa uh, developed resistance by um, abnormal uh, penicillin binding protein whereas resistance to rifampicin is developed by a point mutation in RNA polymerase so the target protein on which the drugs act when we alter the target protein obviously resistance will be developed next we have the important thing about the principle of antibiotic dosing so in the principle of antibiotic dosing first we have minimum inhibitory concentration and second we have minimum bacterial concentration now in the minimum bacterial concentration it has lowest antibiotic concentration that can kill 99.9% .9 of organisms then in minimum inhibitory concentration it contains lowest antibiotic concentration in order to achieve a visible zone of inhibition after 24 hours of inoculation of 10 to the power of 4 to 10 to the power of 5 colony forming units per ml of standard organized organism so this minimum inhibitory concentration is the lowest antibiotic concentration which is which will achieve the that means which will kill the organism or which will inhibit the organism actually minimum inhibitory concentration is the minimum concentration which will inhibit the formation of inoculation after 24 hours uh, the inoculation will be inhibited that inoculation which contains 10 to the power of 4 to 10 to the power of 5 colony forming units for per ml of standard organism that inoculation will be inhibited in back minimum bacterial concentration it is the lowest concentration of the organism that will kill 99.9 percent .9 of organisms 
सी इन मिनिमम बैक्टीरियल कॉन्सेंट्रेशन दिस इज किलिंग द ऑर्गेनिजम्स इन मिनिमम इनहिबिटरी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन वी आर जस्ट ट्राइंग टू इनहिबिट द ग्रोथ ऑफ ऑर्गेनिज्म हियर वी आर नॉट ट्राइंग टू किल द ऑर्गेनिज्म सो दैट इज बैक्टीरियोस्टैटिक ड्रग्स मेनली शो मिनिमम इनहिबिटरी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन वेर एज बैक्टीरिसडल ड्रग्स वी टेक इन टू अकाउंट मिनिमम बैक्टीरियल कॉन्सेंट्रेशन नाउ अबाउट द किलिंग किलिंग ऑफ द बैक्टीरिया कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स वन वी कैन डिवाइड इट इन टू कॉन्सेंट्रेशन डिपेंडेंट किलिंग और सेकेंड टाइप वी हैव टाइम डिपेंडेंट किलिंग इन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन डिपेंडेंट किलिंग किलिंग इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन दैट इज इंक्रीज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन विल इंक्रीज द किलिंग सो दिस इज द फॉर किल सो दिस इज द मिनिमम इनहिबिटरी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड दिस ग्राफ इज फॉर किलिंग द ऑर्गेनिज्म द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन शुड बी एटलीस्ट मोर दैन मिनिमम इनहिबिटरी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ओनली देन द बैक्टीरिया आर किल्ड द बैक्टीरिया आर किल्ड हियर इव वेन द ड्रग कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज अबाउ द मिनिमम इनहिबिटरी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एग्जाम्पल्स आर फ्लोरोक्रीनालोन अमाइनो ग्लाइकोसाइड एंड मेट्रोनिडासोल actually this is the graph which is showing here there is concentration here there is antibiotic okay this is the sorry this is the time here this is time uh, sorry x axis we have time and y axis we have concentration so this blue graph is showing the drug uh, drug concentration slowly the drug concentration will be increasing with time and when it crosses the minimum alveolar concentration only then here only there will be action of the drug on bacteria right next type is time dependent killing so if you see the time dependent killing in the time dependent killing the duration of duration of blood concentration level of drug should be above minimum alveolar concentration duration of blood concentration of the drug should be above minimum inhibitory concentration so always it should be above minimum inhibitory concentration so this is the minimum inhibitory concentration and now see has the concentration increases see even here the this is the drug right this is the on y axis there is concentration whereas on x axis you will see the time so you have given this drug which is represented in blue color so slowly the drug concentration increases when it crosses this minimum alveolar concentration then the it starts acting okay only after minimum alveolar concentration if you start increasing the dose the killing of the bacteria will increase but this increase is only seen up to a particular time and concentration after that the killing is constant so this is called as time dependent killing so has concentration increases above the minimum inhibitory concentration the killing increases but after a certain extent that is certain time and concentration the killing becomes constant after certain time and concentration the killing becomes constant so this is time dependent killing so if you again stop giving the dose of the drug then concentration falls then obviously the killing will also fall after that limit then even the time to dosing is also important then if you see the examples in the examples we have beta lactams and vancomycin are the important drugs then we have post antibiotic effect in post antibiotic effect the bacterial growth suspension see here the bacterial growth suspension or killing of the bacteria even occurs after the antibiotic concentration falls below the minimum inhibitory concentration then we call it has post antibiotic effect that means the bacteria the antibiotic continues to kill the bacteria even after um, even even after the dose decreases below the minimum alve minimum inhibitory concentration so this is called has post antibiotic effect so examples of post antibiotic effect include protease synthesis inhibitor and dna polymerase inhibitor 
both these will show low post antibiotic effect next the next important thing is concentration dependent killing with prolonged or post antibiotic effect if you see this here higher the dose of the drug with wider interval chosen if higher dose of drug with wider interval is chosen then the drug has better compliance if you see the examples are drugs like fluoroquinolones aminoglycoside metronidazole and also rifampicin all these drugs will show post antibiotic effect then if you see the time dependent killing based on the time dependent killing time dependent killing is of two types one it has shorter post antibiotic effect and those which have longer post antibiotic effect the drugs which have short long prolong post antibiotic effect include timed dosing with wider dose interval if you give timed dosing with wider dose interval then you can prolong the post antibiotic effect shorter post anti shorter post antibiotic effect can be done if we maintain the serum concentration above the minimum alveolar concentration then we can do frequent dosing so these include drugs like beta lactams clindamycin macrolides except azithromycin and clarithromycin these include beta lactams clindamycin macrolides except azithromycin and clarithromycin then the drugs which prolong post antibiotic effect here we give timed dosing of the drug with wide dose interval is put and examples of this drug include azithromycin that is mycin azithromycin clarithromycin and these drugs also include tetracycline which are longer acting drugs and these also include doxycycline so all these are the drugs which show time dependent killing so this concept of concentration dependent killing and time dependent killing is very important thank you for watching